Hey everyone and welcome to the next podcast. This one isn't going to be based on religion, so if you guys are worried about this is sort of a religious continuation of how God has influenced me, don't worry about that. This is a podcast dedicated to the relationship that I had with my roommates and myself with a religious group that was on campus that we ended up getting sort of into sort of a a whole bunch of it. And I don't want to give too much away, so here it is. And again, thank you guys so much for listening to the trailer and the last podcast. It means a lot, but I don't want to keep you guys any longer, so enjoy. Hey everyone, it's Joey, and today on the podcast, I think I'm going to start talking to you guys a little bit more about a particular year that I had in college. So another classic college story. And this one is specific to my freshman year when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, and it involves two other people. One of them would be my friend Matt, and the other one would be my friend Isaiah. And this is partially one of the reasons on why I had a fantastic couple months, and another reason why I had some other unfantastic couple of months. Let me just set the scene for you. So this is early on in school, and this is when Uh, everyone's sort of doing sort of the freshman orientation so everyone's got the signs out saying hey come to our event and we'll give you free food or there will be people like saying hey you should stop by and you know meet some new friends and let's do this activity and there was sort of a bunch of other clubs that the school would put on and being from someone being someone who is from a different school it was always fun for me to sort of tag along with Matt and Isaiah uh, sort of follow along and find, you know, maybe the fencing club or maybe the hockey club or the baseball club or sort of any of the other clubs. And one of them in particular, we started to follow. And not specifically with the idea of joining, but for Matt, this was a sole purpose on getting a bowl of ice cream. And we found this group through sidewalk chalk. So Matt was walking home one day and found that there was uh, ice cream. And it said, come on by, you learn a little bit, and a little ice cream social kind of deal. And Matt being Matt was like, hey, Joey and Isaiah, you guys should totally come. And I'm not really an ice cream guy. Uh, I'm not really big into the whole sweets, but I had nothing else to do, and Isaiah wanted ice cream, so I was like, what the hell, let's go for it. So we ended up going to this religious group, and it's one of those sort of non-denominational church sort of groups, so very similar to the Young Life groups, but we ended up going to this this sort of meeting and it was in sort of this larger upstairs of this sort of business center above the place that Isaiah worked um, later on in college but it was it was huge and there was probably a hundred people maybe more in this and so we were just kind of just running through to get the line to get the ice cream and there was this guy who was probably a senior or junior at the time uh, and his name was Matt and so with already having my buddy named Matt or what people in the the dorms had sort of nicknamed is was Tarzan because Matt's roommate was named Matt as well and he was a taller bigger stockier guy uh, so everyone called him Big Matt and then Little Matt or Tarzan because Matt at the time had super long hair so we found our third Matt here at the sort of this religious group, and so we all nicknamed him again Christian Matt. So we started talking with Christian Matt, and we were sort of you know talking a little bit about you know why we were there, and we're kind of like oh you know we thought this was sort of an interesting group. Uh, we sat there with sort of ice cream social, so we're like well you know we'll check it out. And so he was a super nice guy, and we started up talking for for quite some time, maybe I don't know 15, 20 minutes or so, um, and he said oh well. I, you know, I want to. I want you to introduce you to some people here, and we're like, sure, let's let's go for it. Um, and sort of a preface to this story is that, as far as religion goes, um, me and Matt both grew up going to church. My parents were very much in sort of the religious area, with being sort of our sort of religious group leaders so they would give you know different presentations on hey you know this is this week's sort of verse or this is the lesson from from the bible or or whatnot so me and my sister would sort of have to do the pre-demos with them while they'd come up with their material before a class so we would get the same presentation maybe four or five times matt would go to the same sort of type of events 
with his church or religious group meetings, but wasn't as into it, didn't learn as much as I did, just because I had to do everything multiple times. Um, and, and Isaiah wasn't someone who, who was really big in the religious faith, uh, so he didn't really sort of go through the same sort of upbringing that me and Matt did with the sort of every weekend you'd go and have, you know, religion or every Thursday you'd have religion or Wednesday or whatever it was. So we ended up sort of meeting with Christian Matt, meeting a couple of his friends, and before we knew it, this whole event had kicked off. And so he's like, oh, come sit with us, this will be great. And so we were like, okay, awesome, let's do it. So we ended up sitting down thinking this was, okay, you know, maybe we've gone a little bit too far to get this ice cream, but at this point, you know, it's gotta be a couple minutes away, maybe this will just be a short presentation, you know, thanking everyone for coming. But that's not how it turned out. In fact, it turned out in the exact opposite, where it turned into be an entire event with a hundred people. We started singing songs. There was dancing. There was skits that sort of the, the group had sort of been putting on for this event, and it felt like it lasted for three hours. It was so long. And at the end, you know, thank you guys for coming. If you look over to your right, we will be serving ice cream. So we did. And we ended up getting <laughs> the smallest amount of ice cream that you could possibly give out. And to give you guys some sort of sense, it was maybe the size of two golf balls. So like a half a scoop or maybe a quarter scoop. You know, it was a really small, you know, a, a Dairy Queen mini would be bigger. So it was no ice cream. And so I gave Matt my ice cream, and we ended up basically bailing, leaving shortly as, as fast as we could. But before we could, Matt, a Christian Matt, said, hey, guys, you know, let, let's talk. And so we ended up talking, and, and me and Matt being way too nice, uh, and Isaiah being um, sort of a quieter person, none of us said no to any of this. We just kept saying, oh, hey, this is awesome. Thank you for joining us. This was a, a facet time. You know, we learned a lot. And Christian Matt's like, awesome, cool. Well, in fact, we're actually doing Bible study every Wednesday. Um, and so if we could get you, you know, your phone number, that'd be awesome. We can contact. And we're like, sure, why not? You know, whatever. Thinking we can just sort of skip on, on texting these guys. So we give our contact. Me and Matt give them the, our contact information. And then we end up leaving with Isaiah. And we end up going to ice cream place called Chocolate Shoppe to get more ice cream. And I remember we would just sit there while we were eating ice cream and saying, guys, this was such a terrible idea. And Matt was like, oh, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't know this was going to be this, you know, long. I didn't think this, this was going to be such a, a big deal. And me and Isaiah were like, oh, Matt, you know, classic you trying to find ice cream and ending up turning into be a huge religious event for three hours. And so basically that was sort of the first instance that we had with this religious group. Uh, basically, after then, Christian Matt would send me and Matt text messages about a, one event or a second event, and, and us being us, we sort of followed along with that, and we, um, you know, would, would kept saying, sure, we'll love to come, and kept showing up, and, and kept sort of being involved, and getting ourselves involved, versus just saying, like, no, we're not really interested, or instead of just, like, not responding at all to the text messaging, and sort of ghosting him, um, so we ended up getting pulled into all these different things. And I, more than Matt, was getting pulled in even more. And so there was a time where I went on sort of a weekend trip with this group, maybe like two days, and it was sort of like a huge, it was like this, at this person's farm, it was like two hours away from campus, so it wasn't like I could have just like bailed and like walked away. We like got driven there in cars, and we ended up playing a lot of football and frisbee and like having food. I had like an Olympic game and stuff, so I met a lot of people there that were like really fun and cool. And so I was kind of like, oh yeah, this is actually kind of fun. And and Christian Matt being, you know, the the guy that was sort of bringing me into all this would you know introduce me to all his friends and sort of his group of people. And so I was sort of getting initiated into this this group. And at a certain point, there was a, a larger event that was about a four-day event. And uh, I didn't have class on Fridays, and Monday was a holiday of some sort. And I don't remember what the, the reasoning was or what the holiday was, but I didn't have class on Monday. And so I signed up to ride up to this, this weekend trip on a Thursday night. And I had just gotten out of a relationship with my girlfriend at the time so I was kind of like hey yeah maybe this is good for me to you know go out and sort of hang out with some of these new people and sort of try to 
you know, get over this relationship or, you know, sort of help with this relationship to get my mind off of it. So I ended up signing up for this group and this sort of trip ended up to being maybe like a month after my breakup or so. But I ended up going anyways. And I ended up meeting this girl named Amanda and two or three other people in the car. Um, and then we sort of reserved talking and it was it ended up to be really fun. Uh, the car ride up. And to this day, don't know where this car ride was. And I texted Matt. And I said, hey man, I just want to let you know that I don't know where I am or when I'm going to be home. But I want you to know that we're driving. And we're driving far. We have this super small car. We have, you know, four or five other people in this car ride. Everyone's got camping stuff. Like, we're like, we are gone. And I texted him, you know, when I was leaving. And then I texted him like four hours later. And we were still in this car. So we were there driving for a long time. And four hours away, to give you guys reference, is over 200 miles because it's like three and a half or 340 for a trip to Red Wing to Madison and that's four hours so like we were in the middle of absolutely nowhere and so we ended up getting dropped off at this sort of camp and not camp sort of like tenting but camp there's buildings people were like renting houses people had bathrooms and then there was like a bunch of bunk beds and you know heating electricity and water and so it wasn't a total like a wilderness adventure but it was definitely like camp designed for maybe like corporate events on like team bonding or obviously religious groups and sorts and so and we ended up being at this camp and we had sort of this crazy time where we would you know play football or and then we'd have religion we'd go out with our, our groups and we'd do a religious hour or two where you'd read a, a verse and then write a page on your thoughts and then we would meet up again and have dinner and everyone would pray at dinner and there were sort of all these different tables that everyone would sit at and you'd meet all these new people and so I was really good friends with this girl Amanda and I sort of liked this girl and so I was meeting sort of her friends at the time that she was meeting and sort of more of the sort of the girls and then I met this other kid named Chase and Chase and I became like best friends overnight because he used to play hockey he used to play soccer he used to golf and still golfs to this day he's really good at golf and so me and him were like oh you know like I golf I play hockey and so me and him were always trying to get on the same teams for all these events to play hockey or play soccer or play the frisbee or to play football and so me and him were really close and then we ended up meeting sort of our own sort of group of guys and I remember meeting Chase and then I hung up with Amanda separately I don't know like an hour or two later and then she had this good friend named Alex and I was like, oh man, this Alex girl, she's so cool. She would totally get along with Chase. Like, I feel like they would have like a really good relationship. And so we ended up meeting up with Chase and, and sort of my friend group and then Amanda and sort of her friend group. And I ended up like introducing Chase to this Alex. And I was like, hey, Chase, like, this is Alex. Alex, you know, this is Chase. I think you guys are t two cool people. You know, I thought that you guys just would, you know, get along pretty well. And they sort of like walk up to each other and hug. And I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like you usually don't hug someone that you like just met. And it turned out that they had been dating. And so when I said they, you know, looked like they'd be together, I was like, well, you guys know where I stand on your guys' relationship. I'm obviously for it. Uh, and so that sort of became sort of the fun joke with our group. And so again, Chase were hanging out a ton, and then we'd hang out with like Amanda and Alex. And Chase and Alex were like, "Oh, like you know, you should totally like start talking to Amanda." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, I like her, so you know, we'll see where things go." But anyway, so we were on this whole church group, and sort of with this group, you know, there's always kind of like naturally develops like a leader of each grade level, uh, and so it was me who ended up sort of hanging out with this chase and sort of that whole friend group and then also hanging out with Amanda and all her friend group and so I was sort of well known between these both of these sort of smaller groups which added together to make me sort of like a leader or sort of a well-known person within sort of a larger group and so what that basically did is it sort of made me what they called was an ambassador so for our grade level of the freshman I was you know like one of the top five people so I would get pulled aside to do different events I get pulled aside to lead Bible study I was getting pulled aside to do 
the different skits for dinner and all this stuff. And so everyone was like, oh, Joey, like, this is great. You know, you need to come here, you need to come here, and you need to come here. And it was so much fun, and I loved every minute of it. You know, it was pumpkin carving, it was just all this stuff. And we ended up playing this game one night called Capture the Flag. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with this game. But the cool part about this game was it was the entire camp. So it was, you know, maybe two football fields wide, maybe three, and then it was two or three football fields deep on each side. So four or five football fields deep. So this place was huge. And there's buildings everywhere, and there's different bushes and fences and poles and, and all this fun stuff. And everyone is doing this like at night, so it's like pitch black outside, and everyone has glow sticks on their on their wrist. So like one team was yellow, and the other team was blue. And so you could totally see this group and the coolest part was when they started everyone runs up to like the main you know the middle line and you just see this giant wave of blue rushing towards you and then our wave of yellow was like rushing towards them and everyone's you know trying to like tag each other and get each other out and whatever and it ended up getting in on sort of a chase with these people and what I didn't realize was that there was a, a fence there it was one of the weirdest sort of moments in my life where I think I might have blacked out but don't remember it. All I remember is running full speed in the dark, pitch black, hearing the loudest explosion of my entire life, and then just laying down on boards. And the funniest thing is when I was awake and I opened my eyes, there was people, there was four or five people already around me like, hey, are you okay, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm totally fine. You know, I wasn't caught or anything. I was just sore. I'm going to be totally bruised tomorrow. The, f the thing was is that it was so dark out that no one really knew exactly who it was, but they knew that there was this big fence thing that had like someone had run into a fence and they had taken out this huge chunk of fence. And it was, to me, it was funny because it was the classic Tom and Jerry scene where you run through the wall and then you're cut out was like in this fence. And that was kind of what happened because the fence was had horizontal boards and so when I broke through where my shoulder was it broke through wider than where my head was and so there was like kind of a distinct person in it if you sort of looked at it abstractly and, and a lot of people did and I, I felt horrible about the whole thing so I woke up super early the next morning I had a horrible headache and I, my, my whole ribs were bruised and they're like black and blue so I was taking like ibuprofen and stuff but I ended up sort of running over to the fence and there was this guy and he was just not happy about this whole fence situation so he comes to me and he goes hey good morning and I said oh hey good morning oh you need any help with you know fixing this fence and I was just right about to say I, I feel bad I was the one that sort of ran in this fence but this guy goes yeah these damn kids they're always running in and breaking stuff and then they're just feel so obliged to just like oh let's have the maintenance team do it and then that, I guess that kid didn't even like like try to find out who was going to be the one to fix her didn't even try he just like got he just ran away and I, I felt horrible and I, I was like oh my gosh this dude hates me and he doesn't even know that I, that I was the one that ran in this fence and so I kind of was just hey man yeah that's that's tough but you look like you're having you know a hard time fixing this let me help you out so I'm with this guy and I'm helping him fix this fence and we're screwing boards and whatever together and he is just not having it. And he was just, just cursing me out without knowing that it was me for and we were there, you know, for maybe like half an hour to get it all set up. We ended up having then I ended up leaving and we ended up going having breakfast with everyone and then we split up into our sort of small groups, um, which was sort of again split up by grade and we ended up going around the circle and everyone was introducing themselves as Hello, my name is Joey and I'm a freshman and this is my major and here's one interesting thing about me. So everyone sort of knew who I was already, maybe about 50-50 of us kids and there was probably 30 of us freshmen or so. So I knew probably 20 or so, there was a few of them that I didn't, or a few that I sort of did but couldn't really remember their name but I'd seen their face before. And so I was sort of the last one to go and I go, hello. My name is Joey. I'm a freshman as well. I go to MATC and I'm studying robotics and automation. And an interesting thing about me is I was the one that ran into the fence last night. <laughs> and everyone's eyes were like, 
oh my gosh, you're the one that ran the fence? And I was like, yeah, that was me. And so basically the rest of this trip, which was I think there was like two days left, everyone started calling me Fence. And that was just like my nickname. And they're like, oh, what's up, Fence? And I was like, geez, this is, this is terrible. But this is also like so funny. Like this whole thing was just happening. And throughout like this whole trip, I had completely forgotten to text Matt. And the issue was, is that my phone had died already. And so I couldn't text Matt. So I'm sure Matt at the time and Isaiah and, and our other friend Jake all thought I was probably dead because I wasn't responding to texts. I wasn't calling them or picking up any phone calls. And I was worried that they thought I was dying. And no one that I knew had a Samsung phone. Everyone had Apple. And so no one had a phone charger. And so it was just a, a bad situation for me. And I was sort of getting all worried about them. And they're like, oh, it'll be fine. If you want to text them, you can. And I'm like, I don't know their number. So, you know, shame on me. But I ended up having a fantastic time this trip. And we ended up taking this sort of this ride home. And we sort of rode with the same people that we came up with. So I got to sit next to a man again and we started talking again. And so, and then Gabe. Gabe was the other guy. He was sort of a musical guy, skateboarder combo kid. He always wore headphones. He was really good at singing and guitar. Friendly, but totally dressed more like a skater. And so he was really, really cool. And we ended up talking quite a bit in college. We get home. And I came home and I got the, I saw Matt and Matt was like, Joey, like what happened, dude? And I was like, yo, four days of this church religion stuff, you know, I am, I am donezos. And he goes, yeah, about that. I signed us up for Bible study on Wednesdays. And I was like, dude, why? Why are you signing us up for Bible study? I just went to the four-day camp. I'm good to, like, quit. And he's like, no, dude, like, you can't quit. We're just getting started. And I was like, oh, man, man, we got to learn how to say no. He goes, yeah, I know, I know. So from then on, I kept hanging out with the guys that I met at camp and Amanda, and we ended up sort of dating. So we ended up, you know, going to sort of all of these church groups on Sundays. I hated it, but it was everyone else was going, so I was like, I'll go. And then every Wednesday, me and Matt would hang out, and then we would go to Bible study every Wednesday night, and we'd have to read the Bible, and we'd have, like, homework assignments to do, and it was just, it was so terrible. And the worst part is I was kind of, in my head, I was only doing this because of Amanda and our friend group and, and that I met with camp. Um, but eventually, me and Amanda sort of broke it off, and I ended up sort of leaving that group and sort of hanging out exclusively with Jake and Matt and Isaiah. And so I just basically like stopped going to church events on the Sunday nights or on the weekends and stopped hanging out with that sort of friend group with the sort of the religious group. But I kept going to Bible study on Wednesdays. And then Christian Matt had a wife who was doing the the women's Bible study for the same dorm that Matt lived in. So I was living in, in a, an apartment complex called Lucky that was kitty corner to Matt's dorm, Woody. And so I was with the Woody guys Bible study and then Christian Matt, our leader's wife, was doing the leading for the, the women's Woody group. And so I would get pulled into sort of the dinners and like hanging out with that friend group too. But it was one of those things where like, I don't want to be here. Matt would always not text me when he wanted to not show up so there were times that I would show up and he would just not be there and then there would be a few times where I would feel sick or I would have a lot of homework like, hey I'm not showing up to Bible study tonight just a heads up and he'd be like oh yeah I forgot to text you but I wasn't going to show up either um come on Matt you gotta let a brother know what are you doing you know what the heck and and he's like yeah man you know I just I get so busy Matt you're not busy at all you've been texting me for like 20 minutes I know you're not doing anything you know, it takes 10 seconds not coming tonight. And I'd be like, perfect. Done. You know, simple. But he wouldn't. And so we ended up going through this whole thing. And then we ended up doing this all summer. Or all, all school year. And then when we got to the summer, Christian Matt was like, hey guys, you know, I want you guys to sort of still, so you know, continue on with sort of learning a little bit more about your faith and what you believe in and what your sort of spirituality means to you. And whether that's sort of what what faith you're in, I want you to sort of, learn a little bit more and find out sort of what you believe and sort of let you kind of take your own path this summer. So he sort of gave us more homework to do during the summer. And it was 
uh, was like a hundred passages to read during the summer and me and Matt were like sure let's do that and then we ended up basically talking all summer like hey like you think Christian Matt's gonna like text us about doing Bible study again next year because like we're, we're we're terrible that's like yeah I, I bet he would I bet he will so we were kind of like worried a little bit about it but also focusing on our friends in Red Wing and so Christian Matt texted both me and him like hey guys I hope you guys are reading about your passages you guys have any questions on sorry the material that I signed you and I texted back hey Christian Matt like long time no see no I think so far you know this has been some awesome reading it's, it's definitely like learning a lot and I'm excited to continue on with the the stuff that you gave me and then I'm also reading a, like a few passages on the side complete lie I didn't do any of it I didn't even I don't think I even know if I even own a Bible that was like maybe like three weeks before school started and then school started and me and Matt would text each other like hey has he contacted you and Matt no Christian Matt hasn't said anything like has he contacted you and no he hasn't contacted me either so we ended up basically never getting contacted by Matt again I never saw anyone in that religious group ever again even walking to the you know walking to the supermarket or to class or walking around with Matt or going to the the parties I never saw them ever again any of them and and I remember Matt comes up to me and he goes hey Joey I saw there was free ice cream you want to go I was like Matt no not today today is the day that I learn how to say no <laughs> we're not doing this again and so that was sort of my experiences with religion in college and I kept telling my dad like hey man I'm 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 religious I'm going to Bible study you know this is awesome and and he's yeah Joey like you still got to go to church though and I was like well let's take one step at a time but yeah so that was sort of my freshman experiences with religion uh, I just thought you know that might you might find that story funny or interesting and I'll catch you guys on the next podcast peace out everyone